Welcome to SwiftLink, the number one software for the appliance, retail, and service industry. In this video, we will be showing the service partner portion of the SwiftLink program. Prices for this package start as low as $324 to start up and $49 a month. To start a service ticket, you will first enter the customer's account number at the top of the page. While this field can be any 10-digit alphanumeric sequence you would like, we at SwiftLink suggest using the customer's 10-digit phone number. Upon hitting Enter, you will see your existing customer information appear in the blanks below, as well as any of the existing customer history that would be available. If we click on one of the tickets below, we see the history for that call. This will give us a complete view of dates, times, what we worked on, parts used, and what, what the actual date was the last time we were out there. If we click on the Exit button, it takes us back to the account information screen and allows us to start a new ticket simply by clicking on the new service ticket line. As you can see, this brings us to the ticket input screen. This will be an area where we will add all the information about the service ticket we will be running as well as doing for, and scheduling for our technician. The first field we come to is trouble reported. This will be the area we will record what the customer has reported to you as the issue with the appliance. In this scenario, we will use washer not spinning as our trouble reported. Upon pressing enter, the cursor will advance to the PO slash claim number field. This is an optional field that can be used to tie any kind of special numbers to the service ticket you may wish. Next is add code. Add code gives you the ability to select how your customers found out about your business. This will give you the ability to run a number of reports in SwiftLink and view exactly what the percentage of your business was brought in through the advertising source. This comes especially handy when you're negotiating rates with your yellow page or newspaper ad salespeople. Next we have type of call. This field will be used to designate your service call as in warranty, extended warranty, out of warranty, etc. As you can see, we simply click on the drop down box and select the item we are looking for. In this case, I will select out of warranty. This brings us to method of payment. This is an optional field that allows us to find the method of payment for our technician before he goes out on the service call. Just simply to give him a heads up on what he should be looking for. Agent gives you the ability to track who took the service call on the phone. This way if there's a question of what was done or why it was done, we can go back and ask that person who the call taker was. At this point we move to the second part of our service ticket. This will be the item we actually are going to be performing the service work on. The first two, two items you will see are the edit and clear button under equipment. If I click on the edit button, it allows me to view all of the items I have ever worked on for this customer. By clicking the appropriate item and clicking select item for service, we can add the make, product number, model, serial number, and ticket to the ticket we will be working on. If the item is not on the list, Simply click the cancel button and we can add it manually. Click the drop down box for make and select your item. You can see I've selected WPL for Whirlpool. Product type works very similar. I click the drop down box and select washer as the type of appliance I will be working on. This brings us to model number and serial number. I'll go ahead and type in the item I will be repairing. We have a set of boxes below that allow you to add a second item to the appliance or the ticket if necessary. If not, we'll go ahead and skip down to the third portion of our ticket, which is scheduling of the call. The first option you will see here is callback. That's simply a checkbox that will allow you to check check your technician's callbacks that they have with customers. The second field here would be urgent. Urgent is simply a way to mark hot, mark a hot call on your dispatch calendar. Uh, this will change the, cal the color on the scheduler for the ticket. This will allow us to then go ahead and schedule our service call. In SwiftLink there are two ways to accomplish this. The first way is to use the quick scheduler, which you see through the middle here. This is a very quick and simple process of clicking on boxes you see, selecting the date, range, time, estimated duration, and technician that will run the call. 
If you choose to use this option, you can then go ahead and print on click and click save and print at this point. It will go ahead and print you a service ticket for your technician to take out on the call with him. <coughs> if your company needs more of a visual view of who's got what for a specific day, please click on schedule dispatch and it will take you to your dispatch calendar. This calendar has the ability to show you, you who has what for a particular day. As you can see below, we have a number of calls listed, calls listed for setup with a number of texts. If we click on the headings above, it gives us the ability to sort the calls by different options. To change the date of your call, simply click on the appropriate date on the calendar. Once you have chosen a date and time for your call, enter the info in the blanks and click Save and Print. This will then print you the service ticket your technician will take out with him. He will fill out the information and bring it back to the office so we can complete the paperwork. Once your tech brings the paperwork back to the office, we are ready to start the invoicing process. Once again, we will start that by entering the customer's account number. As you see below, we now have a ticket that shows is open. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that ticket. As you can see, it brought me back into the ticket input screen. Now I just need to finish up at the bottom half of the ticket. I will first start by adding the date of the call. Then the time into the start time and end times field. This will automatically calculate the total hours for you. The cursor will then advance to the service performed. But we will go ahead and type what our technician actually did on the job. I'll go ahead and place, replace Dell for my service performed. <clears throat> now we are ready to invoice our service call and take payment for it. As you can see, the cursor is blinking on item number. We can go ahead and type our parts and our labor that we use. The first part we'll use is a 95405. This brings up the part info as well as the selling price. If I press enter again, it adds it to the line below. Now I'm ready for my labor code, so I'll type LAB. This brings up the labor for me and allows me to add my price on the fly since it may vary depending on my call. Now I'm going to simply press enter until I get to my method of payment screen. On the screen I have a drop down box that allows me to select a different method of payment. I'm going to choose check, and as soon as I do, my cursor moves to the check number. I will put in check number 879. Once I am satisfied with the info, I am entered, I can go ahead and click complete, and it will go ahead and give me a finalized invoice number. Once the invoice is finished, the service ticket is then changed to close, and all items have been billed and the inventory has been deducted. With SwiftLink, it can be just that easy to keep track of all of your service information. 